Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Oh, how's everybody doing this morning? Hopefully very good. Um, we're going to be working on um, Midnight Tales, and this is page four and page five. And I think I have everything inked and trimmed, and we're going to get started here. So it's a pretty, pretty simple flat page. Um, there's going to be a left and a right flap. And then, of course, we've got our base. So I did, I'm doing some color blocking on the base, and then we've got the left and right flap. So let's set aside the designer papers for a second and get our flaps installed. So the left-hand flap is going to be four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight. And it's just gonna get installed flush. It's a really hot, humid day here in San Diego, so I'm trying to get some stuff done to um, get my air conditioning turned back on. It's so loud I turn it off when I'm recording because unfortunately it's right outside my craft room window and it's too loud and I've heard, I've got some complaints before about not being able to hear me over it and I get it. So I try to work around that as much as I can, although coming into the summer months, it's gonna get a little harder. I guess I'll just have to get up earlier. Um, there it is, it's my handy dandy tape tear tool. If you don't have one of these, why don't you have one of these? I love this thing. It's a little tool that I created out of necessity. Originally I had a two by two acrylic square that you get um, out of the fabric and notion sections of your craft store um, but it has a whole bunch of um, incremental marks across it and it, it was just so busy it was hard for me to use so we made our own acrylic square with our name naturally and then we put these two lines in it this is an eighth inch the second one is a quarter inch all the way around which can be handy when you're doing a mat and then we put this little pop socket on as a handle and that works one it makes it easy to pick up and two it makes it harder to bury it on your desktop so i i love it and you can buy one of these from our shop for less than it would cost to get the acrylic square from Joann's or Michael's or wherever you get your sewing notions. So I, I really, I use it all the time. I, in fact, I can't craft without it anymore. Um, it takes too long to pick up a pair of scissors and trim, in my opinion. And I've never been able to tear it straight. There are a few crafters that I... Um, that I watch and admire that can do it. Ginger Rop is one that I, that does it. It just amazes me that she can tear it straight every time. I can't do it. Not my thing. So there you go. And most of the time I have my tape on so you guys don't even see that usually. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on page five, only it's going to be uh, the mirror. So if we placed the smaller, oh, I didn't tell you the size of this because I was too busy talking about the tape tear tool. So this one is four and a half by eight. This one is, let me double check, but I believe it's an inch bigger at five and a half. Uh, no, it's five by five by eight, you're gonna score a half inch. So it's a half inch larger than the uh, opposing flap, half inch. So I'll go over those measurements again as we put together page five. So the smaller flap will go on the right hand side, the larger on the left. The smaller is four and a half. Let me double check that. Yep, four and a half by eight. Score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. And then the larger flap is five, five by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side. So there's just gonna be a slight overlap. do something a little different uh, as far as constructing this. Normally I put my base page down first, but I'm not really sure where I'm putting my magnets yet, so I want to think about that for a second. 
do a little housekeeping. I'm gonna get my papers laid out again. So this is from the eight by eight. The solid greens are from the patterns and solids. This is also from the eight by eight, the top piece. This is from the 12 by 12 and it's gonna go on the inside. So I'm just gonna lay everything out real quick. That's gonna go like so. And then these two pieces, I'm using the pattern side up and they're going like that. So that is basically the layout. Except I got those backwards. This one goes here and this one goes here. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember what I'm doing here. Okay, now I'm planning on using that ephemera card, but then this morning I got up and I started looking at this, and that's too much purple. This is what I'm gonna use here. So I'm gonna use <coughs> an ephemera card um, on top, and I'm going to put a magnet on the ephemera card and also on this flap. So now that I know what I'm doing, they're gonna be slightly different because the ephemera card that I'm using on um, page five is going to be vertical. This one's gonna be horizontal. So that is gonna change the placement of the magnet slightly. But really what all that means at the end of the day is I can go ahead and do all my insides and then um, go ahead and put the orange on the A side and then figure out my, and then uh, install the ephemera card and then figure out the magnet placement between this flap and the ephemera card. So basically I can put all my papers down except for this one. And, um, and then I know I need to put a magnet here and here. And if you guys have watched me for any length of time, you know that I have been known to put paper down and not figure out where I was putting my fastener first. So I wanted to kind of walk through that, make sure I didn't make that mistake this morning. Okay, just do a quick dry fit. I hope everybody's doing well. There's a lot of pent up demand for this uh, collection and to get some content out there. So I go. I hope you guys like it. Um, I think it's neat. Uh, the last time I did something that was kind of like a Halloween fall album was The Magic of Oz. And um, that was quite different than this one. And it was very popular. And um, I loved that collection. It was fun to work with. The Wizard of Oz, The Lion. It was just a fun collection. I liked it. And this is too. Um, I think you guys are going to like it. A lot. Oh, it looks like, of course, of course it doesn't fit because I didn't dry fit it. <laughs> Ding dong. So I'm going to set that aside, let it dry. It looks like I need to run it through the trimmer. That's why you always dry fit. I should follow my own rule. But we've got plenty of stuff that we can lay down in the meantime. Just have to remember I can't close that flap because there's wet glue. So this is from the 12 by 12 collection and I had used some of this paper somewhere, I can't remember where, at the off the top of my head. Uh, page, I used it on page eight. So this was left over after I'd done page eight and um, I'd only used like a four inch strip on page eight. So I had this eight by 12 inch piece and so I just split it in half and I'm sharing it between page four and five. And that's that's why it's not covering the whole base. But also I just like color blocking. It makes it interesting, I think, instead of just having these big solid images. So it's a little of both, necessity and a design choice. Okay, and I thought I'd, I'd have to trim this down. So I had roughed this out at two inches and it's, it's too wide. So I'm gonna take a, a sliver off. It looks like an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. But I'm not gonna measure it in my trimmer. I am going to place both of these tick marks directly on the cut line and cut that way. <clears throat> and I'm just having 
having a panic attack that I didn't hit the record button. Oh my gosh, good, I did. I don't know what's the matter with my brain. I need to take some time and figure out how to mirror my recording device either to my laptop or to an iPad or something so I can see what you're seeing. I have to stand up and look at my recording device and it's not very handy, which means I don't do it very often. Okay, perfect. Let's go, let's go. Hopefully, yeah. The other one's mostly dry so I think I can trim it now. Funny, I know I was just recording, not yesterday, day before. But I feel like it's been a long time since I've been talking to y'all. You know, it's not quite dry enough. I don't want to lay it down. Um, yeah, it's gonna stick, so I'm, I'm not gonna lay it down yet. I'm going to use my magic eraser I'm trying to pick up some of that glue. I don't think there was much there, which means I can now go ahead and lay down this piece, which I'll dry fit before I put glue on because I just learned a lesson the hard way. And it looks like I forgot to ink this one. I am using Powder Puff Mahogany. This is my go-to. It's a chalk ink. And what does that really mean? Well, it means that I get, you know, the coverage that I want and it's, it's nowhere near as messy as alcohol ink. Um, it washes off my hands. It washes off my board. I've even dropped this face down in my carpet. And because it's not juicy like an alcohol ink pad, I, I lifted it up and it didn't even really transfer any um, ink to the, to the carpet. So I'm not swearing by that. That's been my experience. Um, and I love it. I used to avoid inking because it was so messy. I would get it on my hands and then I would drag it across my designer paper and ruin a page. I've, you can, it, it's possible with this, but it, you have to work a little bit harder to make that happen. So I really like it. And I'm not a big inker anyway. I just like to knock off the white core, especially if I'm doing a black base. I don't want that little trace of white peeking out. Um, I think it's distracting to your eye. So there you go. Now we're moving right along. So I think this is dry enough that I can go ahead and mark it. Sorry, I'm jittery because I drank coffee without eating anything, which is my typical MO. <laughs> I'm not a breakfast person. And that looks straight. So I'm gonna trim this and then we'll get it into the book. I know. Nala said, why did you do that? Why do you keep making mistakes? All right, let's see how we did. I think it's gonna work. Part of the reason I can't wiggle it into because it's grabbing. Am I out of the, yes, I'm out of the hinge area, but it's upside down, sorry about that. Shoot. Looks like I need to trim it again. Yeah, I need to take a sliver off this side. I, uh, I marked it uh, upside down so it doesn't fit as well as it should. Okay, that should do it. Oops, you can see I got a little heavy there on the ink. That's all right. Oh, I can live with it. I think I mentioned it, I'm not sure what page, but I'm using a bundle. That's what I started with. 
If you're new to the channel, if you go to the description and click show more, the first thing you're gonna see is a material list, which lists the major elements that are used for this. So the bundle and the bundle uh, consists of 12 by 12 collection pack, a 12 by 12 patterns and solids, and the eight by eight collection pack, die cuts, chipboard, stickers, and ephemera. So that's, and then if you buy a bundle from us, you also get coordinating ribbon and charms. That's what a bundle is. So you can buy the um, components individually or you can buy a bundle, and I started with a bundle. When I'm done with the album, I'll show you what's left. And then I'm gonna go over real quick again. See, there's ink. And it comes right up. Now, that wouldn't happen with alcohol ink. Um, you'd have to catch it right away, and even if you did, it would leave a trace. And the only way to get it up is with acetone, and acetone takes the grit off your craft mat. I've tried it. <laughs> I know, I have some experience there. So anyway, so that's done, and it comes off your hands that easy as well. So I don't usually have brown tinted fingernails like I used to. All right, so there's the inside, so we're moving right along. Okay, so this is gonna go here, and I forgot what I'm doing here. I think I was planning to put an orange strip and I can't remember if I'm doing it on the outside or the inside. Because this is from the eight by eight, it's a four inch split in half and this is a five inch panel. So it's a little shy. So I just want to, uh, I'm not doing that right. I'm gonna get a visual on, do I want a, a, an orange strip here? Or do I want to tuck it underneath? Because I don't think it'll show. It might, it might show a little bit. <clears throat> it should not show underneath this. And I think I want this because we are gonna put this busyness on top. And I think having another stripe is gonna to be too, too much. Too much going on on the cover. Yeah, I don't like that. So we are gonna place um, this here. And then, so there's a couple things you could do. I made it five inches. If you wanted to make it four inches, you could do that. And, and the way I'm designing it with this ephemera card closing over it, it would still close a four inch panel. Um, I don't know why I did five inches this time. I'm not sure, but I did. And um, I'm gonna add that decorative strip here. But if you don't want to do that, you could make this panel four inches and the way it's designed with this extending over both flaps, it's still going to close. So just FYI, something to think about. So the next thing I wanna do is visually <clears throat> place the ephemera card and I don't know if I want it up or down and to make that final decision I really want to see what it looks like um, next to page five because when you open it that's the spread. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my uh, design elements put on to page five so that we can finalize the placement of the ephemera card. So I'm not going to glue this panel down right now. And yeah, so I'm gonna do this piece because I can go ahead and put this in right now. After I ink it. <clears throat> and then we'll lay down the matching piece and then kind of shift them around and make a decision.
Okay, so here's the piece that's going to go here. Okay, now we can look at these side by side and make a decision. I think this one I'm going to center. I don't know. I'm thinking about shifting this up or down. That's upside down. What do I want to do? What do you guys think? <laughs> I think... I think I'm going to go up just a little bit so it's not going to be perfectly centered. Okay, so that's enough of that. We can move five away now because we have a pretty good idea of where we're putting this one. So I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler and <clears throat> use it to try to put this in relatively straight. That looks good. I'm going to draw a line and then I'll tell you what I did, how far I came in. I came in seven eighths, but you, you can round that to an, an inch if you like. I don't think it'll make that much of a difference from a design perspective. And oh, my pencil line's so faint, it's hard to see. One and a quarter down and almost an inch over, seven eighths. And that's, that's where I placed it, okay? So I'm gonna hold it to my two reference lines then I'm going to draw a line here, and I know I don't want my glue to go past these this line. Oops, I broke, I broke my lid. Oh. All right, I'm going to use my reference lines again to place this. Before I press it completely in place, I'm just going to verify again that it's going in straight and it looks like it. It looks good. Okay, now we are at a stage where we can actually place our magnet. <clears throat> to um, pick a piece of designer paper for the back of the ephemera card. Okay. Which I can do in a few minutes. Whatever I do, I'll, I'll do the same for page five. Okay. I'm going to close this press that into place and now we can add our we're going to have to do a little bit of a color block we're going to add this and then a strip here <clears throat> and I actually I have these two black pieces too so I don't know I don't know I, I picked green to go here or orange to go here I may change my mind in a minute but let's go ahead and add this <clears throat> I, I try to do most of this you know, and then just glue it down with you guys. But what I find is when it's laid out, it looks one way, but once you actually glue it down and start looking at it, it, it looks a little bit different. Um, I can't really explain why that is. Um, I think part of it is because you see the black lines around it where it's breaking the patterns up anyway. Um, so I think that's part of it. Um, but really, I make my final decisions after I've got a couple of pieces laid in, and I'm like, oh, I think I should change that. I thought it was going to be this, and now when I think about it, this would be orange right here, and it's like, wow, that just looks kind of shocking. Maybe I should do something a little more in line with the, the patterns I already, I've already chosen. <clears throat> now, if I do do orange here on this strip, I'll probably do orange over here to pull that back in. So I'm going to think about that for a few minutes. And while I'm thinking about it, 
we can go ahead and put together page five. So let's go ahead and do that. So I wanna look at the inside of page four again. So on page four, I have the purple all the way to the right. So in page five, I'm gonna have it all the way to the left. So they're mirror images. <laughs> can you guys hear Nala? She wants some attention from me. She's so sweet. Mm, poor me. We need to go for a WALK, but I want to get this in the can so I can start the upload process while we're out doing that. We'll see. She may not let me go that long. She gets more and more vocal as the time goes by. Okay, so this is gonna need a little trim. But we don't need to trim these, so I don't think we need to trim these, so. At least not this one, so let's go ahead and get this in. check it before I put glue on it <laughs> and not make the same mistake and it needs to be trimmed. Uh, okay, let's see. We did it. that before I pressed it down. It would have made kind of a mess. Okay, there we go. Okay, we'll get our last piece in, which is the screen piece. And it's the same pattern, it's just flipped. I thought this was too busy going straight across. So I wanted to break it up just a little bit. So just to give you guys an estimate on this, so this was um, an eight by 12 that I cut in half. So this is seven and seven eighths by six. So I rough cut a two inch piece to go here and I knew it would need to be trimmed down because the whole panel is eight by eight. And I wanted to have this um, mat around the green. So I knew I'd need to trim it down, but I started with a two inch. So I had six inch, two inch, that equals eight inch. Um, and I knew I'd have to trim this down a little bit to get out of the hinge space, but also to create this um, color block seam. So um, it, I just find it helpful to, to do that rough cut and set it aside so I don't accidentally cut into it for some other purpose um, without meaning to. Um, and then I just group it with the page. Okay, so for... Um, For this ephemera card, I'm 
basically centering it top to bottom and then I'm looking for the center line through the middle of the ephemera card. So that's what I'm looking at. And visually this looks pretty good, but I'm gonna double check it. Because of these lines, sometimes you have to choose to go with the lines versus um, straight on the paper, which I don't like doing, but your eye is actually drawn to that pattern and it tells your brain that the straight line is the pattern, even if the pattern is slightly askew, which sometimes it is with crap, pick 45. Just a minute, Nala. I got a couple more things to do and then we can go, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna put my corner mark here. You don't have to draw a line the whole way. All you really do need is a good solid corner line because if you get that in straight, um, you're, you're fine. Now I'm gonna turn it upside down, end over end, draw my line so I don't put glue past it and glue my flap shut, which I don't wanna do. Okay. Now I'm going to locate my corner first. I need a little space here. I have a metal desk and my ruler wants to grab it. one and three quarters. This needs to come over a little. One and three quarters. A little more. Okay, that's that. Now we can put our magnet in. goodness clumsy okay so that is page five now I'm gonna take a quick break decide what color I want that strip and what color we're gonna do this and when I come back we can finish up page four and five so I think I'm gonna take a long enough break to get my dog out on a walk so she stops uh, crying. And uh, so I'll be back soon. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Again, this is page four and five. I'll put them side by side. Isn't that pretty? I like it. This is a good fun collection. You guys are gonna enjoy it. Um, I think it's very giftable, especially if you got kiddos in the family or if you guys are big on Halloween costume parties. This is a great um, collection. So I'll be back soon. Hey everyone, I'm back. And I did decide to go with the orange strips here. So you can see, I've just got it laid in here. I haven't glued it down yet. And then to pull that orange back in, the back of the ephemera cards on both page four and five are also gonna have orange. So let's go ahead and add these last bits. And um, yeah, and then we're gonna be done with page four and five. And my voice got loud because I had to check to make sure I hit record. <laughs> So this is exciting, feeling good. I might actually get more than my target done today. That would be nice to get a little ahead of the curve. So in addition to working on this, um, <laughs> I'm also working on um, another small album that I hope to release at the same time. It's actually not an album, it's a folio 
featuring uh, Graphic 45's pre-made waterfall folio. And um, this will be the first time I've done anything with it. And then um, I'm using blue fern paper to cover it. And that blue fern paper, oh my God, I gotta tell you, that paper is so nice. Um, it feels so good in your hand. It's very heavy, very smooth. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't done anything with Blue Fern yet. So that'll be my first project with Blue Fern and that paper is just, oh, it's so yummy. I could just touch it all, <laughs> all day. And I think you paper lovers know what I mean. It just feels so good. Anyway, so I'll be doing um, a uh, folio album with that. And here's a quick sneak peek. There it is. Isn't this cool? So this comes pre-made. Um, so this is great for those quick projects that you need to get done in a snap, or if you're somebody who just absolutely hates cutting into chipboard, uh, I completely get that. I don't like it either. It's a necessary evil when you're an album maker. And we've been looking high and low, trying to find pre-made albums that are high enough quality that we would get behind them. And this one is pretty good. Um, I would like to find a base album <clears throat> that, uh, had good quality you know then and then you and matching paper so you could just add your flaps and we're always on the lookout for that but we haven't found anything um the ones that we had seen and tried in the past had issues either the gussets were too narrow or um you know we ordered a couple they came in and you could see that the the hinge areas were already tattered. They were already falling apart just in the shipping process. So there's no way I would get behind something like that. You would wind up having to recover it. So then what's the purpose of having a pre-made, right? So there you go. Anyways, we are always on the lookout for that. And so far, um, I've been handling that and measuring my paper and turning it upside down, opening, closing it, and it's holding up. So I'm pretty pleased with it so far. But I'll give you the uh, pros and cons when when uh, I do that, and it'll be there'll be a tutorial for that one as well. So more to come. <clears throat> but once in a while, you just want to get an album out quick, um, and not have to make every single design decision. And that's it's perfect. It's very simple. It's just got uh, waterfalls and a pocket, so it's very simple, straight, straightforward. You could sit down and finish it in one sitting. All right, so there is page five, page four. I'm gonna open and close these really quick and then go back over where I got the paper from, um, what size it is to help you guys out. So of course these are cardstock back to ephemera cards and they're the larger ones. There's also the three by fours, but these are the four by sixes. Both papers on the cover are from eight by eight. All of the green is coming from the Patterns and Solid collection, and all of the orange is also coming from the Patterns and Solid uh, paper pad, which is 12 by 12. The inside, this large print, which matches the cover, this is from the 12 by 12, and it's six inches across, just to give you a rough, rough estimate. You don't have to do it exactly like this, or you can opt to use your eight by eight here and use your, um, paper from the 12 by 12 here and if you did that um, you could uh, if if you covered the five inch panels you wouldn't have to do the color blocking so if you reversed it <clears throat> used a full 8 by 8 here and used your 12 by 12 here you wouldn't have to have that orange color blocking but I was trying to preserve um, this pattern to, to use in other places in the book. So you got some options here, but that's how I did it. So again, all the A-sides are eight by eight. Everything on the inside is from a 12 by 12, either the collection pack or a pattern in solid. So there you go. So for paper planning, I think that's what you need. And uh, the next time we get together, we'll be working on page six. See you guys soon.